Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, which is the third webinar in our Sums Up um, series of the SUMP Learning Program for Mobility Practitioners. And welcome to the webinar today on measure selection for SUMP. Um, I'm just seeing people are still coming in. Um, okay, but I think we can start now. I hope you uh, can see my screen and hear me well. And we will uh, start with a few technical uh, tips for the um, for the webinar. I think most of you have dialed in via computer. If there is any problem sometimes with the with the audio, it's also possible to join by phone. Um, but I think it should be fine. Then you are all. You are all by default uh, muted right now. Uh, we do that to decrease the background noise and to just have a calm, calm environment for our presenters. So everybody is muted, but there are different options how you can um, um, like make yourself heard, so to say, or ask questions. There is a button to raise your hand in case there's something very urgent. But we would, um, if you have any questions to any of the presentations or um, or in general about the project or about anything we say, we would like to encourage you to use this question um, button or this question section that you can see here on the on the screenshot as well. So there you can write your questions. Um, we will partly perhaps be able to answer them already during the, the, the webinar. And especially when there are questions to the presentations, we will then take them later in the question and answer session. Um, but um, you can ask anything also if you have something, if, it, if there is something technical or if you have ask, uh, questions about the project. So just write them there and that's a, a better way for us to manage them and we can make sure we answer everything. We will have several polls in this webinar um, where, we would, where we ask you a few questions because of course we would also like to know um, who is actually joining us today and, and um, what you're interested in, etc. But you will see when we uh, come to the polls. Um, you're just required to click on the answer and then we can show you the result, etc. So the webinar team today, um, you can see here, so that you also know a bit like yeah who you are who you have to, who you have to do it with today we have three presenters uh, my colleague uh, Maya Rosanen who is working together with me um in, and we work together in the sums up project then we have Anna Dragutescu from ICLA Europe who's the project coordinator of this project she will have a presentation and then we have our city case example from the Oradea metropolitan area and Mr Ciprian Barna um, um, Oradea has been a uh, city has been taking part in our um, our first SUMP learning program for for expert cities, and he will tell you about uh, their experience and especially about their experience with the measure selection process for SUMP. So this is what we do today. Now I even took a little bit. <laughs> I was a bit fast with that. So we start uh, with an um, an update or like a presentation about the different learning activities that we organize for mobility practitioners. So for you within the Sums Up uh, project, Maya will introduce those different activities. Then Anna will um, give an input presentation on the measure selection process for SUMP and introduce the measure, measure selection guidelines that have been developed or developed in our project. And then we come to the case example and we'll give most time to the case example and the city example to hear their experiences. And um, as I said, whenever you have questions, especially to Cyprian's presentation, please write them down and then we try to take them all or as many as possible in the question section before we wrap up and then um, end the webinar for today. Um, so next we will actually like to ask you a few things um, as I just mentioned so we'll have two polls because we would like to know who you are as well. So um, the first one is the question about the organization that you represent. Please answer this question so we get an overview about who you are. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Okay, and here you can see the results. So majority comes from municipal administration and education institutions. That's, that's I think, the result that we mainly get. Thanks a lot. Um, and now we go straight with another um, with another poll because we would like to know. This is now our third webinar in the series. We would like to know have you if you have participated in other SUMP uh, or in other sums up webinars before, or is this your first webinar ever, <laughs> even? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'll share the results. And yes, great to see that 50% uh, almost have been at least in one of webinars before. Great to have you back and welcome to everybody who is here new. Thanks a lot. Um, so, Oh, do you see it? Sorry. I'm sorry. Now you see the poll results, right? Yeah. So here you see it. So 47% have been in the webinar before this one. And 18% even in all three so far. Great. Um, so it's just these are just things that are, are interesting for us also and in, in, in for planning our our uh, activities in the future etc so that's what we ask ask these kind of things um yeah thanks a lot um for the answers and now we will um continue in our um in the agenda we'll start the webinar finally i will um hand over to my colleague maya second we'll make her a presenter and she will introduce you to the different learning activities that we're still planning. Thanks. Okay, good morning or good day also from my side. I hope you can now see my camera and also the screen. So let's start the presentation. So I will be telling you today a bit about what kind of different learning activities we offer for mobility practitioners besides these webinars that you're attending today. But first a bit about SAMP's up project. So our main aim I'm is sorry. to really... Yes? My, so, uh, we don't see your screen. At least I don't see your screen. Can you check? Yes, wait. Check and... Okay, sorry. Now. Now? Yes, now is the screen. It should be. Yes, yeah, Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. So now, so the main objective of the Civita SAMSA project is really to set up the SEMBs as the European wide strategic planning approach for mobility. And we focus especially on countries and cities where the take up of the SUMB is still low and the negative effects of the transport are really serious. So during the project we have already organized SUMB learning programs which in the end of the project have then targeted over 100 cities. We are currently organizing SUMB learning program 4 and then starting soon SUMB learning program 5. But then besides these programs where you have to apply we are organizing these open activities for all mobility practitioners during the project. And our aim is to reach 200 mobility practitioners during the project, like overall. And what is a mobility practitioner? We have defined that as, as any individual who is interested in mobility, can work for a municipality in transport department or maybe in other related department like city planning, but somehow mobility is related to that person's 
work or also a person who works for consultancy or city network or NGO or any kind of so different kind of individuals who have interest in mobility team and especially in sustainable urban mobility plans and I hope this SUMP cycle is already familiar to all of you and it might be seem like a challenge to go through this whole cycle and there are as many different ways to set up SUMB as there are cities of course it does have to fit the local context and the circumstances as as well and reflect the city's challenges like how the SUMB will be then built up but there are also like some common elements if you go through the whole cycle that the SUMB should include like you should Analyze the mobility situation, identify your stakeholders and find right ways to work with them, then develop some scenarios and select smart targets and so on. And it may sound complicated because it has like different kind of steps that you need to go through. But luckily there is quite a lot of support already available for, for cities to implement SUMBs. There are like different kind of guidelines and different kind of training workshops organized, organized where cities have possibility to exchange with each other. And this is of course like one of the opportunities as well to learn from one topic. And then what do we offer in sums up project so we offer different kind of activities so that it's easy for everybody to participate so like i mentioned we have organized this SUMP learning programs unfortunately the calls have been already closed but maybe some of you already have participated in those then we also offer e-courses and these webinars as well as guidance material different kind of tools and reports as well that may help you and i will tell a bit bit more about these different activities uh, so first of all we offer these e-learning courses a series of e-learning courses for different experts and these help to go through the different phases and steps in the SUMP process and they they will start from the beginning of the cycle and then help and then these are like very easy to participate because they are self-study courses but with some concrete uh, exercises as well and they are available anytime so you could participate also during the midnight if you would like to in the evening time and then there are also we have included several case examples from cities who are already experienced with SUMPs and then there they include also tips for guidelines and further reading so they are available in the mobility academy anytime and the uh, we will during the SAMSA project we will develop seven e-courses so the first three courses have been now launched and they they are focusing on the first stages of the SUMP cycle so preparing for the SUMP and analyzing the mobility situation then creating the SUMP vision in cooperation with different stakeholders and then then how to set up SUMP as a strategic plan and select a right targets for the plan and also targets that you can then measure later on and then soon <coughs> excuse me we will then also in the spring launched the next three courses the course four five and six which is also the same topic a bit than we have the webinar today and then we have these webinars so we have still three more webinars to come and they always focus on different aspects of the SUMP and introduce useful tools and guidelines but also we always have at least one city case example to really hear from practical experiences and then there is possibility to ask also questions and next webinar topic will be SUMP action plan and how to develop that and also like how to get political commitment to the plan and the actions as well we will launch the date in our website and twitter account but it will be organized in may but please follow the channels if you would like to participate and 
If you missed our previous webinars, the first one was starting the SUMP process and tools for SUMP, where we had also CDKs from Vilnius, Lithuania. And then the second one, data collection for SUMP, where we had CDKs example from Malmö, from Sweden. So those are available in SAMS up website. The presentations are available, but also the recordings of the webinars are available as we will make also the recording from this webinar available to you. And then we have national workshops, which are then targeted really the local or they are usually organized in local languages. So in certain countries, so we will have still two workshops to come in Italy, Rome in June 2019. And then also in Spain, San Sebastian, June 5th. So also you can follow our website to learn more about these activities. <clears throat> then we have already published some reports, for example, the status of SUMP in the member states. So this is available in our website and maybe it's good to also check the status of SUMPs in your country and what kind of support mechanisms there are available. And also we have policy developed policy recommendations. There are also targeted recommendations to local level and local authorities. And then we have these guidelines and you are lucky that you will hear today a bit more about these measure selection guidelines. They will be presented by Anna to you, but then we also have this action plan template, which will be then the topic of the next webinar if you're interested, but they are already available in our website. But this was a short overview of the different kind of activities. So if you would like to participate, just follow our Twitter. So that's a useful way to get more information about the activities. But thank you. Thank you, Maya. Thanks a lot for that introduction. And before we come to the next um, to the next presentation, we do another quick poll because, of course, we are also really interested in those of you who are working for um, a municipality. We would like to know what is actually the status of your SUMP. So here comes another poll to just get an impression like where you are. Do you have an SUMP at all? Are you preparing your first one or are you at the implementation stage or you even have more experience with SUMPs already? Okay, I think the numbers are getting stable. A couple of seconds, and then I will close the poll. Okay, so here's the result. So most of you are in the preparation phase of your first SUMP, or you don't have any SUMP yet, and around 20% you're implementing your first SUMP. Yeah, so I really recommend also those of you who are now in the preparation phase and you have not taken part in other webinars, for example, before, or um, to check out our e-courses that Maya presented, because there you would also you will also find some valuable information and perhaps some support and help um, that you can use in that stage. Um, and of course, those that are now implementing the SUMP, I mean, you are now, I mean, this is probably really, um, this webinar kind of is at the right right place for you. And also there, of course, the, the e-courses uh, will, will support still. Okay, thanks a lot. Let me hide this one and I will um, hand over to my colleague Anna, who will give the input presentations and I will now, Anna, make a presenter. So good morning, everyone. I hope you hear me well, see me well, and you can yep. also see my screen. We see your screen, Anna, but not you. You cannot see me? I can see 
I can see Anna. Oh, I cannot see, but but okay, it's yeah, okay. So uh, thank you, Esther, and thank you, Maya, for introducing our uh, mobility practitioners. Uh, learning program and uh, as Esther mentioned earlier, my name is Ana Dragutescu. I work for ICLE European Secretariat and I am the project coordinator of SAMSAP. Welcome everybody to our uh, third webinar already for the mobility practitioners. I hope you have enjoyed the previous one, the previous ones and uh, hopefully you will stay with us for the future webinars to come. In the presentation for today, you will hear, um, I hope, interesting um, things about how to select the measures for your sustainable urban mobility plan and how to better start with this topic um, by um, setting up the context of the measure selection. As you can see in the, um, in the cycle, the measure selection is an important step that uh, lies in the second half, um, in the second uh, quadrant of the SUMP cycle. And it's an important step that helps you reach the targets of the SUMP uh, that you go through and you develop. Uh, practitioners need to be aware of the challenges uh, that they can face and meet along the way in order to conduct an effective and efficient SUMP process with the aim of achieving a high quality sum. So what are our learning objectives for today? The measure selection, let's see first uh, what the measure selection is. The measure selection is a process of identifying the most suitable and cost-effective policy measures to achieve the SAMS vision and objectives and to overcome the identified problems. So all the problems you have identified in the first quarter of the SAM cycle, you will have to deal with them in the second quarter of the SAM cycle and uh, the measure selection is one good important step that will help you achieve the objectives and deal with these problems. What do we need to know about this process is uh, to better understand how to select, assess and package the measures and to be able to assess and evaluate the impact that these measures will have once they will be implemented in our cities. So let's take a first look at the topic. To understand the mobility needs and transport problems of the cities, it's difficult. It's a difficult task when thinking and implementing sustainable urban um, mobility. We need to understand how measures can meet the needs and address the problems, and to think beyond any preconceived solutions. You will hear about these preconceived uh, thoughts and solutions that decision makers have for the cities. So again, what is a measure? A few definitions for us to better um, have um, to better understand uh, what we are talking about. So a measure is an action that can be implemented to contribute to reaching one or more policy objectives in the SUMP um, process development and to overcome one or more identified problems. We can package the measures and a, a package uh, of measures is a combination of different measures which have been grouped together in a package to better contribute and to more effectively contribute to, the, to reaching the policy objectives. And we can use the help of option generators um, and go through the process of option generation because we have to somehow obtain these measures. So the process by which possible measures are identified is the process of option generation. And we have to also go through an option appraisal, the process by which a proposed measure or package is assessed in advance of its implementation. So 
So, um, as I said before in the previous slide, the measure selection could be a challenge for the cities. And there are five principal reasons why we say that. First of all, because cities have a very wide range of measures available to them. Too easy, and sometimes it can be too easy to overlook solutions, which could be more effective. There are many stakeholders and politicians that have these preconceived ideas as to what should be done in the city. And evidence suggests that these solutions are often not the most cost effective. So they come up with, a, with their own ideas without going through um, a very well established process to understand whether these uh, solutions are the most are the, the most beneficial ones for the cities. Then the most cost effective measures are often not the most easily implemented ones. So there are split responsibilities, there's lack of funding, the public opposition can limit what it has been done. An SUMP is likely to draw on several measures, but the performance and implementability will depend on how they are packaged. So it's always a challenge to package the measures and a SUMP needs to be more than a wish list of measures. Prior to the implementation, each measure needs to be defined in detail, assessed in terms of its likely impact. So we have to understand what the future impact of the measure could be in order for us to decide whether we will include it or not in the long list of measures. Um, there are different ways of creating this list of measures and going through this process of uh, defining the measures, creating the list, rating the measures, and um, going uh, to uh, obtain approval for the list. I am going to introduce um, this, these steps for you to better understand how it's um, the, the easiest way to go through this process. So first, we have to determine the baseline to review or the already implemented measures and the status of the uh, city's current transfer system, because the city doesn't start with um, point zero when we develop an SUMP. The city has previously implemented something else, other transport plans, other sectoral plans, so we need to understand what other measures have been implemented and how we can better connect our SUMP to what's already been implemented. The, we have to create the list of measures to design um, to design, design to address the city's vision and targets, as I said before, to rate the measures and uh, proceed to obtaining approval for the selected measures. A few words about this baseline and determining the baseline of the city. The city has to avoid thinking about solutions be before it has agreed on a, a vision and the objectives to reach the vision. This will help to better understand what problems um, the city faces. So there's a specific um, strategical approach and cycle that the city has to go through. So we, have, we don't have to start with listing the measures before understanding the vision and the, the objectives that would, reach, uh, would help reach that vision. There are different key elements that should be analyzed as shown in the table before, uh, below. You will see this table uh, with um, specific modes of transport and um, key elements that need, need to be analyzed in order for us to come up with a good list of measures. This process will deepen the knowledge about the current status of the city. The, to the, to, it will help the city to determine the capacity for measure implementation. And it should be done, as I said, systematically for each mode of transport. So the list, the measures um, have to be identified and we have to identify the best measures that will help to solve the problems um, listed before. Um, a good list of measures is a good exercise for the cities. Uh, it will increase internal knowledge and awareness, capacity building with politicians and planners in the organization. So the list um, creating and listing the measures doesn't have to be necessarily done by only uh, technicians. It can involve and it's advisable to involve a wide, um, a broad 
list of uh, stakeholders. We have to include and choose physical measures to improve the infrastructure regarding safety, walking, cycling, uh, public transport, but also management, mobility management measures <coughs> that increase the efficiency of the existing transport system. There is an increasingly wide range of policy measures already available for the European cities. You can find in, in the manuals that um, Maya introduced you to um, a very long list of measures. Uh, they, our colleagues screened the already existing measures in different, from different projects, from different um, transport um, programs. And you can find this list of measures in the annex of the um, some sub manuals, but you can also use other sources for you to understand what measures can be included in the long list of measures for your SUMP. I advise you to use a good option generator um, because this process is crucial to find the interventions that offer the highest return, as I said before. Um, the full range of options should look across all modes, so don't forget any modes of transport. What you see in this slide and also in this slide, and I will um, uh, detail you about this, I will give you more details, it's um, the CONSULT uh, measure option generator. So CONSULT was designed to help policymakers, professionals, and interest groups to understand the challenges of achieving sustainability in urban transport. And it can support the cities to identify appropriate policy measures and packages. And it provides information, detailed information on individual policy make, uh, measures. You have the, the, the website, the URL for reaching consult in the, in, in the bottom of the slide. Just a few more words. So as you can see, you have a measure option generator um, specific page, but you also have a decision makers guidebook and the policy guidebook. So you can find uh, specific measures that you can include in your uh, SUMP on this website. And you can also find descriptions for each of the measures and how they can be implemented, how can they be assessed, and um, how, can, how you can find evidence of their performance once implemented. Another very good tool that I recommend is the Urban Transport Roadmap, developed within another very um, useful project. It's an online tool, as um, also CONSULT is. And it can help you develop the first scenarios of your sum and also uh, list the, um, the measures that you want to include in the, um, in the sum. So it can explore and identify appropriate sustainable transport measures, quantify the transport environmental and economic impact of these measures, as I said, to understand the future impact. And um, it can consider an implementation pathway for this policy scenario. Again, you have the URL to reach this website in the bottom, bottom of the slide. And, um, so just a few more words about this website to understand how it works. You will uh, fill in the information about your city. You will be asked a couple of questions about how the, your city looks like and about model share and about all sorts of transport information about your city. And then uh, you will receive also um, you will receive information and answers from this uh, tool. You'll see, uh, as I try to um, uh, design uh, something for a, for a German city in, um, in the bottom part of the slide, you'll see your model share, how it looks like, you will see, and you'll receive all sorts of information that I mentioned earlier. Uh, just to move on with the measure generators, you can also use Max Explorer or Evidence or Civitas. So as I said earlier, you have um, 
a lot of opportunities and possibilities to find uh, measures on the, um, within the projects. Uh, Max Explorer is an interactive tool to help mobility management beginners in choosing the mobility management measures. Then you have evidence that contains a set of 22 mobility measures, reviews and training materials for the uh, academics and trainers. And then you can use the Civitas website that also provides measures uh, within the Civitas policy field. Just to move on with our uh, presentation, sometimes the sum measures can be rejected. It's very common that these things can happen. So um, then the, the SUMP becomes less effective. There are various types of barriers and various types of reasons for this uh, to happen. There are governance barriers, so there's a lack of autonomy from the national government, so there are inconsistent policies across government boundaries or a mismatch of public and private sector objectives. There are financial barriers, particularly related to public transport issues, because there's a reluctance to increase the fees. Some of the measures would require the increase of fees for public transport operators. There are legal barriers um, because the legal powers to implement a particular measure might not exist. The legal responsibilities there are, um, could be split between agencies and regulations that require involvement of the private sector. There's obviously the political acceptability, which is always an issue that we have to face with. Politicians fear of lack of public acceptance, so sometimes they just reject the measure from the start because this could um, uh, become less because they could become less popular because um, by implementing that implementing that measure or technical barriers, just the simple lack of skills and expertise could be uh, a very important barrier. Once you have selected the long list of measures, now you have the, the list and you have to uh, make it short because um, you cannot implement all the, uh, all the measures listed there and you also cannot implement them all in the same period of time. So how you have to rate the measures to identify the ones that are effective and feasible for the city in the future. You have to consider aspects like um, whether the measure can be implemented, if it contributes to a more sustainable city and if it is feasible. You can see in the left side of the, of the slide, again, I use the measure option generator from Consult. Um, this generator can help you um, rank the measures and also to rank them compared to other measures. So by uh, bringing in other measures that support the, the initial measure in order for you to be able to, pack, to, to create packages of measures. You, uh, my advice for you is to use diagrams so they are easier to be presented to politicians and citizens when you rate uh, the effectiveness and feasibility of a, of a measure. When the rating is completed, a summarize of the highest rated uh, measures or most prioritized um, list can be brought on when proceeding with the sum planning process. And the list of measures is finalized. Congratulations, you have a very nice list of measures now uh, included in your SUMP. Uh, you have to gain approval for it, so you have to uh, come forward and present it to the citizens and to the politicians, even though the politicians have already been involved in the process and also hopefully the citizens, but the final list should be uh, brought uh, to the public knowledge. As you see in my slide, this very colorful scheme um, has been developed by the, by the city of Vienna when developing their SUMP, and it's an, an image, a drawing, incorporating the main messages that the citizens' council uh, have had uh, for their urban mobility plan. So it's really very important to um, agree with the citizens that this is the these are the measures and the, the best uh, things to implement for their cities. 
Uh, one step forward, now you have the, the short list of measures and you have to think how it's better for them to be implemented. And in order to create synergies that can affect, can achieve more together, so once you implement these measures to have the highest effect and the highest impact uh, for the cities, then um, it's better if you create packages of measures. So a measure on its own is not sufficient to be implemented because it doesn't have, it doesn't reach the impact that you, you foresee um, in the first place. So the, the advice is to create these packages of measures of two or more uh, measures together and they create, um, the, 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 big, the impact is bigger than the individual uh, effects and they can facilitate the other measures. So one package, one measure by implementing one measure together with another one, it can also facilitate the implementation of the initial if foreseen measure. Um, just a couple of uh, short examples for you to understand about, um, again, from Vienna. So um, Vienna has listed a few, um, as you see in the right part, uh, fields of actions for mobility, and they have um, six very important objectives. And um, and the fields of actions um, connected to these objectives. And then the list of action, the list of measures listed in the on the left side. You can see how they each package of measures will uh, reach the specific objectives and fields of action they have listed um, in, the, um, in the previous part of the, um, of the sum. So it's very important how you connect and how you list and how you connect to the objectives and your uh, targets already um, defined in the SUMP. A few other examples, OECD has also described six different packages of um, management measures that it can be used as inspiration. I will not read them through because I'm already um, behind the schedule with my presentation, but you can uh, find them in the manuals and you can, uh, they, you can consider them a source of inspiration for listing the measures and also packaging them. A few references, so you have heard from uh, Maya about our sums up manuals. They uh, have been designed for, designed for three types of cities. So for beginner cities, the start manuals, manual for the um, intermediate cities, the step up manual, and for advanced cities, the innovate manual. You can also find the standards for developing the SAM action plan also online but I invite you to join our next webinar because I will talk about the, the, the development of this SAMP action plan, but you can also uh, find online previously developed guidance within pre, uh, previous projects like the SUMP guidelines. guidelines. I'm, very, I'm sure you are very aware of them, the PolySAM methodology and the measure selection manual developed within the challenge project. I hope you have enjoyed my presentations. In, in presentation, in case you have any questions, um, I will probably hear them later. So thank you very much, and I hand it on to Esther. Thank you, Anna. Thanks a lot for a very comprehensive presentation. And just um, one more time to everybody, you will all receive also all the presentations afterwards with all the links, etc. So. Uh, you don't have to write them down right now, so you will get all the material. Um, yes, thank you, Anna. And I think we will now directly, like after we have now heard a lot of um, like background and uh, let's say a bit more theoretical background, how things should be or how you should uh, conduct it, we will now um, hand over to our um, to our city case, and I will make. Uh, Mr. Ciprian Barna from the metropolitan area of Oradea as a presenter, and he will introduce you of how Oradea has worked in practice with selecting measures for their SUMP. Good morning, uh, everybody. Do you hear me? Yes, you're well. 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, for inviting me to to join uh, the webinar, the third webinar. Uh, I will try to present you the the most important uh, development phases regarding the development of the sustainable urban mobility plan at the level uh, of the city or Radia by focusing uh, on the on the measure selection process. Uh, in order to have a brief uh, introduction, I will uh, start to present you a little bit uh, the, um, let's say, the um, territorial impact of the garden in order to have uh, an overview. It is uh, situated, the city of Orada is situated at the border with uh, Hungary, uh, at about uh, 600 kilometers uh, from Bucharest and 250 from uh, Budapest and approximately 500 from Vienna. It is the 10th uh, largest city from, uh, from Romania, uh, with a total area um, of 116 square kilometer. The total number of inhabitants is uh, 222,000 uh, inhabitants, um, number of households uh, 91,000, uh, number of inhabitants per square kilometer uh, 1,900, and the total length of streets uh, uh, approximately 430 kilometers. This means uh, the total road transport infrastructure uh, amounts uh, 900 streets. Uh, we are talking also about the functional urban area. Uh, <laughs> we are talking about the Rada metropolitan area, which is the first organized metropolitan area from uh, Romania. It was uh, funded in uh, 2005. Uh, and uh, encompasses uh, the city of Oradea and uh, another uh, 11 surrounding uh, municipalities working around the uh, global development territorial project. Uh, we are talking about the territorial influence at the level of the whole county, of the level of Bihor County, uh, which encompasses uh, 600,000 inhabitants. But this influence, territorial influence, of course, uh, has also an impact at the cross-border uh, level, um, encompassing in the catchment area of the city of Oradea also uh, 10 other uh, municipalities uh, from the Hungarian side border. We also have uh, uh, public transport uh, services uh, uh, in, in the one uh, municipality situated on the other side of, of the border. Keep, regarding keep the role keep, keep, of... Sorry, I'm, sorry the, to I'm sorry to interrupt you. Could you make a full screen of your presentation, please? Uh, yes, I will try. Yeah. No, it's okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, regarding the role of the city, um, at the level of uh, the whole, um, let's say, uh, county, um, we. I just want to present you a little bit. Uh, um, let's say the, the the importance of this role. For example, uh, more than 42 percent out of the total population from Bihor County live in the first area of influence of the city of Oradea. Uh, we have defined three uh, catchment areas, uh, which are, uh, let's say, defined in terms of uh, travel uh, time uh, by car from the city of Orada. And uh, regarding, for example, the number of employees, 62% of the total number of employees from Bihor County working in the city of Orada. Um, the same thing, 77, 72% out of the total number of employees from Bihor County are concentrated in the first area of influence of the city of Oradea. This means uh, at about uh, 50 to 20 minutes travel time by car from, from the city. Uh, the same thing um, that uh, emphasized the role of the city in the regional development is the, 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 the GDP, for example, production. We have more than 65% of the total GDP uh, from Bihor County generated at the level of the city of Forada. Uh, the same thing, uh, the most part of for example, from Bihor County uh, on both directions are concentrated in the Orada metropolitan um, area. Um, we have uh, more than 5 million of, uh, of uh, passengers that transit uh, the border uh, between Oradea and uh, between Romania and Hungary. Uh, 
regarding the traffic flows on the public transport network, on the relation between the city of Oradea and the surroundings, uh, the, the, the level of municipality from Bihor country, we have more than 400 bus travels per day, the relation between, uh, between the city and the other localities. Um, let's talk about uh, a little bit about the national mobility uh, context uh, in order also to give you a better perception of the tools that, uh, that uh, we have disposed in order to develop, let's say, a shift or transition toward uh, an SVMP approach. We are talking about the lack of uh, current uh, network of motorways in correlation with uh, territorial development. Uh, more than half of the registered cars, uh, unfortunately, for Romania in 2007, uh, have more than 15 years, according to the Romanian Health Observatory report. The very rich network of cycle paths in major city, uh, cities represents approximately 22 kilometers. And uh, regarding the urban public transport, we have over 40 cities with a population between 60,000 and 2 million inhabitants uh, that uh, dispose of uh, organized urban public transport uh, services. You have also some details. I won't uh, read it because you, you can see it very easy. Um, descending a little bit at the, at the level of the local mobility context, uh, we have uh, uh, had the opportunity to elaborate uh, the first uh, sustainability plan from, uh, from Romania, and we have started in 2013. At, at that time, we did not have any specific provisions regarding the elaboration uh, of the sustainable urban mobility plan. So in this context, we have used the, the EU SUMP uh, guidelines existing at, uh, at that time that are in course of being uh, updated. Um, the, the main context regarding the mobility um, was related to the lack of an integrated special planning policy. The focus um, on authorizing procedures and less on uh, integration and correlation with other sectorial policies. Uh, lack of an urban mobility dedicated policy, except the feasibility studies for implementing of uh, various investments in the road infrastructure. The main facilities, hospitals, markets, hypermarkets uh, uh, were uh, distributed from a special uh, spatial point of view the level of the city. In terms of metropolitan development, uh, we more than 70,000 inhabitants from the city uh, moved in the functional urban area. Therefore, uh, with the other surrounding areas, uh, having a community rate uh, which amount approximately 25,000 persons per day, uh, out of which only seven, uh, 8,000 uh, persons uh, travel by public transport. Uh, investments in transport system uh, were more focused on the supply side uh, measures. This means the development of uh, new roads, modernizing the existing road infrastructure, increasing the road capacity, uh, creating of more parking places. This was the context before the, the, the SUMP uh, in 2013, when the primary objective was uh, to increase flow capacity, um, to, to, to find alternative for cars and uh, increase the speed. Uh, we, had, uh, we had experienced an important increase of um, motorized transport from 71,000 cars in 2008 to 96,000 cars in 2015, and today we have more than 108,000 cars registered at the level of the city. Of course, there was also a lack of uh, territorial planning. Uh, the urban sprawl moved some uh, linking points toward new economic activities without uh, modeling the public transport system on this uh, new, let's say, uh, territorial reality. On few main corridors, of course, the tramway shares the road space with the cars, generating at each change, at each change supplementary problems. In terms of organizing the circulation and uh, uh, this causes also traffic jams. Uh, lack of dedicated lane for buses, the lack of an integrated metropolitan public transport system. Uh, at the level of the public transport system, we had we had uh, more than uh, we had five tramway lines and uh, 19 bus lines, uh, with a, a total number of travels per day estimated at 174,000. 
and uh, uh, out of which uh, 127,000 uh, were done by the tram by tramway and uh, 46,000 uh, travels per day by bus. Um, Linking to the SUMP cycle and uh, the starting of the transition toward an SUMP approach, uh, we have uh, developed uh, the overall phases, uh, starting from preparation, goal setting, elaboration, and uh, we are now in phase of um, in, the, in, the, in the current phase of monitoring. Uh, in 2013, the SUMP was assumed, uh, the, the, the SUMP process um, was split into two, two parts. At the beginning, the SUMP was assumed by a local transport company through a new funded project. Um, and uh, due to the lack of uh, financing at national level, only EU funds perspective uh, and all local budgets were taken into account. Uh, this means the regional operational program. Um, in order to cooperate, uh, to coordinate the overall development process, of course, it was uh, set up a working group, um, which was composed of various uh, key uh, important ac actors uh, from, the, from the city hall of Oradea and uh, the other uh, company owned by the city. Um, we did not have a, a self-assessment regarding the status of various SUMP elements, except for the public transport. Uh, while the, the timeline was split into two phases, uh, together with the related uh, objectives and measures, uh, 2023 and 2030. Uh, we uh, have identified uh, the key actors and stakeholders, so representatives from various departments, uh, from the city hall, county council, public transport company, environment agency, public health direction, county police department, universities, uh, SMEs, NGOs. Uh, the development process was the responsibility of Forada local transport company, as I previously mentioned. But after the modification of the law on urbanism in 2016 and uh, 2015, uh, this um, um, document, strategic document, the SUMP, was also assumed by the city of Forada. Um, in spite of involving a diverse array of relevant stakeholders, uh, the participation level uh, unfortunately was limited and comprised in most uh, cases uh, the entities under the control of the municipality. Uh, in terms of content, uh, as I previously mentioned, it rather concentrated on traffic management and public transport. Uh, but we, uh, we, we try also to, to force the correlation with the general urban plan and the development strategy. Uh, we, of course, we, we experience this uh, continuous lack of integration between the land use planning policy and the transport, uh, both in terms of content and institutional uh, structure. Regarding the second element of the, the, the first phase of the preparing well phase, uh, uh, when we talk about stakeholders and citizen involvement, uh, we had applied various tools, of course, in order to ensure uh, large visibility of this process. Uh, we developed uh, newsletters, questionnaires, uh, leaflets for drivers, students, participation in various TV broadcasts. We organized uh, various mobility forums and also public uh, consultations. Um, regarding the agreement on work plan and management arrangements, um, um, it was set up the working group that I previously indicated, which was in charge of assuring uh, the defining of the work plan for the planning process and for monitoring progress. Uh, when it uh, came to discuss about uh, the um, element three of this uh, first phase of the SUMP cycle, analyzing the mobility situation and development of scenario, um, the importance uh, of uh, the current analysis applied to the overall transportation modes uh, was a very important stage uh, as it enabled us to have, let's say, a clear and a real uh, picture regarding uh, the various uh, problems that we have at the level of the city. 
In this respect, you can see that we have applied the uh, uh, various uh, tools, so traffic sensors in 50 places from the city of Oradea uh, in, for, for the duration of one week, between 7 to 20 o'clock. Uh, origin destination surveys on the seven main uh, entries, five on the national roads and two on county level roads. The census of passenger on public transport network uh, uh, for all the lines uh, on the overall operation duration service for one week. Origin destination surveys applied to main institutions, companies, schools. Uh, we had uh, uh, distributed more than 2,700 questionnaires and we have uh, received back uh, more than 1,300 1, questionnaires. And uh, when it comes to discuss also about transport modeling, we have used the uh, Visum software, a special software dedicated to uh, multimodal uh, transport uh, modeling. Um, discussing about uh, the distribution of travels according to their scope, uh, scope um, you will, uh, I can tell you that uh, the, the third most important position uh, were occupied by uh, going to, to work, um, then uh, shopping and uh, education, uh, so for the students and uh, for the school. Regarding the distribution of travels over the day, the, the peak hours were at 8 o'clock and uh, 16 o'clock. Regarding the, the model split that resulted further the um, um, elaboration of our SUMP uh, analysis, uh, we have the following results. So uh, the model split for cars was set up at 39%, public transport 35%, 25% for walking and 1% for cycling. Uh, regarding the second phase of the SUMP cycle development, so the rational and transparent goal setting, so the vision was identified as uh, being uh, the, the need to set up an effective, integrated, sustainable and safe urban transport system that would promote the economic, social and territorial development in the city of Orada and its catchment area. Uh, the SUMP specific objectives were uh, five and were focused on the accessibility, safety, environment, economic effectiveness, of urban public spaces. Uh, we also we, uh, informed the public by organizing a final public uh, consultation. And uh, regarding the targets, identification, the priority and developing of smart targets, we have uh, defined a lot of uh, uh, targets, such as the increase of the occupancy rate of public transport vehicles with 8% until 2025 extending the public transport network toward the metropolitan area, ensuring the affordability for traveling in the public transport system, extension of the non-motorized transport modes, increasing the attractiveness of the public transport, involvement of the ped uh, improvement of the pedestrian network, revitalization of public space in decay, reducing the GHG emissions and noise levels generated by the transport sector until uh, 2013 with um, 25% and so on. Uh, in terms of um, sustainable urban mobility operational objectives, we have set up nine objectives uh, that uh, further on uh, we focused on in order to develop uh, various uh, measure packages. So the first one is related to the reducing of the traffic congestion, reducing the need for traveling, developing the sustainable transportation modes, walking and cycling, of course, reducing the negative effects of motorized traffic on the environment through traffic management, improving the discipline in the field of construction planning and correlation about among uh, public investment projects, uh, innovating in the field of parking management, improving the road safety, improving the road transport infrastructure and developing the local public transport system. Network, fleet, tables, public transport stations, extension of the public transport in the metropolitan area. Uh, in terms of uh, development scenario, we have uh, explored four scenarios. 
the first one was related to the short term, to do nothing uh, until 2017. Scenario two, as until present, medium term, 2020. <laughs> Uh, scenario three, minimalist policy, medium term, and uh, the fourth scenario, which was related to a committed policy on the long term, and uh, which was the uh, scenario that was chosen uh, finally at the level of the, our uh, S sustainable urban mobility plan. Uh, regarding the element six, developing of effective packages of measures, uh, we have also focused on uh, the determining the intervention scales on neighborhoods, on urban and suburban level. Uh, the initial package of measures uh, was related to, to 98 measures, uh, but we also uh, were focused on identifying the, 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 the best practices, uh, the level of the cities that already implemented the respected uh, measures. Uh, the distribution of measures uh, was done in accordance with the uh, scenarios. Uh, we have used uh, the consult uh, program, uh, which uh, was developed by the Institute for Transfer Studies uh, from the University of Leeds. And uh, we had uh, 76 expanded set of measures. Uh, and after applying the cost-benefit analysis and uh, multi-criterial analysis, uh, we had a final package of measures, uh, so 19 measures representing 37 projects. For a total estimated budget of uh, 132 million euros until 2013. Uh, regarding the summary of the main proposed measures, we have focus on education and awareness in schools, developing of an integrated cycle paths networks, developing of a bike sharing system, developing of cycle parking, regular analysis and decisions regarding the roads on which speed can be uh, increased or reduced, introducing of a congestion tax for the cars entering in the city center, uh, developing of pedestrian areas in the city center and neighborhoods, Procuring of new public transport vehicles, tramway and electric buses. Uh, extension of the tramway line in the southern part of the city. Rehabilitating the road transport infrastructure. Improving the road connectivity on the relation between the city and the surroundings. Correlating, correlating the investments in all the transportation modes for each new important real estate development. Uh, building of new parking uh, facilities, setting up of 16 electric charging stations for electric vehicles, developing of a network of trolley buses, building of an intermodal terminal at the level of the main railway station, developing of busway lanes, um, setting up of a traffic management center. So this was, let's say, the, 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 the most important measures that uh, that uh, were listed in this uh, initial phase. Regarding uh, the assigning of responsibilities and resource, uh, uh, we have identified um, the regional operational program uh, as being uh, the most important financing source in our case, uh, because it has a priority axis dedicated to the sustainable urban mobility development through the priority through an investment priority number 4.8 uh, sustainable urban mobility which enabled the local authorities to better integrate the overall transportation modes in the urban intervention areas we have an allocation of more than 1.2 billions of euros uh, for uh, for romania for the period uh, for the 2014 2020 period uh, we have defined, of course, the role in projects coordination, internal departments for the city hall, uh, or other local transport company, or other metropolitan area, transport, trans regional transport authority. And we started to elaborate uh, the, the feasibility study via the external expertise. And, of course, uh, we developed the application forms and we, we submit the, 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 the projects. In terms of uh, um, arrangement for monitoring and evaluation, you have here some uh, indicators that uh, we set up in order to, to evaluate, uh, to monitor and evaluate, uh, let's say, the implementation of, uh, of, of the above mentioned uh, projects. Uh, 
As I previously mentioned, in 2013, we started the elaboration of the SUMP, but in 2060, the Romanian law uh, on territorial planning was updated with the Urban Mobility Plan concept. The Urban Mobility Plan uh, became uh, mandatory, um, and it was defined as a complementary strategy uh, of territorial development uh, documentation, uh, which, um, which is complementary to the general urban plan. It is a strategic uh, planning tool through which it is correlated, the special development of the localities with the mobility and transport needs of persons and goods. Uh, it addresses all, the, all forms of mobility and transport, including public and private transport, freight and passengers, motorized and non-motorized moving or stationary. Uh, it was also set up uh, from the national level uh, content, a structure uh, for the for the sustainable urban mobility plan. And uh, as I previously mentioned, so the regional operational program uh, was uh, was in fact the main uh, financing uh, instrument. This uh, instrument was very 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 important because we experienced. Uh, uh, rebalancing of the transportation modes inside the, our developed projects. If, for example, at the beginning we had uh, projects that were focused uh, more on cars, little by little, uh, due to this uh, program and the conditionalities uh, that uh, were uh, promoted at the level of the regional operational program, we started to have uh, more uh, local-based uh, projects that, uh, improve the integration of uh, interventions. Uh, but even in case of, uh, for example, of projects that are not focused on the local-based approach, we had a, uh, a better integration in terms of transportation modes. And I uh, just wanted to give you uh, the example of an integrated uh, project, uh, which is in course of being uh, prepared uh, at the level of uh, the city of Oradea in order to obtain uh, EU funds through the regional operational program. Um, and uh, I would like uh, just to, to present you some measures that uh, were uh, selected. We had uh, nine, uh, 19 measures uh, representing 37 projects um, in the frame of uh, the Sustainable Urban Mobility Plan. Here you have uh, the, pedestrianization, the example of the, of, uh, the pedestrianization of the of a central area, which is the main area a pedestrian area from the city, Uni, Uniri Square, which uh, was um, pedestrianized in um, 2015 and 2016. Um, you have some images regarding uh, the investments uh, that were uh, taken, uh, the, so these pictures were taken previously and, uh, and after. Uh, another uh, important project was related to the extension of the tramway line in the southern area of the city. 16 million euros funded by the European Union Regional Operational Program. The same, the modernizing of the tramway fleet. For uh, we, we will procure uh, 20 new tramways for the, for the public transport service at the level of the city of Oradea. Uh, and also uh, the reorganizing of the mobility on various important uh, uh, boulevards uh, and uh, axes uh, at the level uh, of, uh, of the city of Oradea. For example, you have here the example representing the south to north axis, uh, who is going, which is going to, to, to be reorganized uh, by, um, of course, uh, promoting the sustainable urban uh, transportation modes. Also, um, we, have, we have had also measures that uh, do not, uh, let's say, uh, encompass, uh, encompasses um, uh, fi direct financing of, uh, or funds are uh, more related to the management. So we introduced uh, of express bus lines uh, in order to, to, to decrease the, com uh, to reduce the travel time for, uh, for the citizens, especially on the link between the city and the industrial parks. Uh, another measure is related to the pedestrianization of the Ferdinand Square. 
you have some uh, images, randomized images. It is a project uh, in course of being contracted in the frame of the regional operational program. The same thing regarding the penetration of another street, which is situated in the historical city center of Oradea. Finance in the frame of the regional operational program. The pedestrianization of the left side bank of Krishurepede River. The same thing uh, with another important area uh, near the Krishurepede uh, Bank River. Another um, uh, measure or project was related to the pedestrianization of Vasile Alexandri Street. You have some images uh, that were taken before and after. But also we focused uh, on, the, on the developing of uh, uh, pedestrian areas in the most uh, densified uh, neighborhoods of the city. Uh, three, we, we have three projects, investment projects, uh, that are in course of being evaluated in the frame of the regional operational program, uh, which relate to the most uh, densified area at the level of the city, but also other complex projects uh, regarding uh, to the development of a complex network of underways uh, in order to reduce uh, the passage uh, time for, for the cars, and also the, the, the prioritizing of the public transport. This is a complex project that uh, previously was focused on uh, uh, car traffic management, but little by little integrated the, the element of uh, public transport. Another project was related to the extension of the public uh, transport, but also the related infrastructure in the historical uh, city center. Uh, other important measure, uh, the building of uh, five parking facilities in the city center, uh, approximately 1,500 parking places. Uh, this kind of project is financed by the own budget. Uh, so the integration uh, of the, the integration um, was not uh, was not a condition. Um, this is why this kind of uh, projects or measures, which are uh, financed uh, by the budget, are uh, are not uh, fully integrated. Let's say in the SVMP uh, uh, principles. The same thing uh, underground passage on, a, on an important boulevard, enlarging the bridge in order to ensure an overlay for cars traffic. It is a project financed uh, through the own budget. Um, the building of an inter internal ring road uh, in an important um, in order to uh, link some suburbs uh, of the of the city to the main. Uh, road transport network of the city. Uh, regarding uh, the EU and national SUMP guidelines, uh, I, I consider that uh, the EU uh, and uh, the national guidelines had a positive effect because it affected the policy framework. Of course, it ensured the funding. It facilitated the exchange of experience and best practices among various cities across various uh, projects that were implemented by the cities and also awareness raising was an important uh, issue. Of course, uh, these guidelines enable uh, the decision makers to better understand the importance of organizing the mobility uh, in the city. Uh, but when SUMP became mandatory and, and new funds uh, were available, it enabled them to better integrate it in the urban development. Um, Nevertheless, of course, SUMP should become more than a mandatory document for accessing of uh, EU funds. It is a very important uh, condition. Uh, and uh, of course, from the EU level, um, uh, support should continue through the cohesion policy for the city in order to help them to, to, to uh, transition toward the real SUMP 
uh, approach. The EU level uh, should be further involved in the preparation and evaluation phases of uh, SUNDs, uh, cities uh, maybe with more than 500,000 inhabitants, uh, uh, of course, uh, particularly when EU funds are requested. Um, identified best practices should be further explored from a technical, economical, uh, social environment impact point of view and promoted the level of all cities. And of course, uh, the need to define a set of uh, indicators at European level in order to have, a, let's say, a common evaluation grid uh, of the SUMP in the um, European cities. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Cyprian, for a very comprehensive presentation. And thanks also for including all these pictures. I think it's always very um, descriptive to see like on pictures like how city how the city structure and city escape has changed no, um no. yes thanks so um even if it was quite a long presentation now i think it was really good to get all this 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 content and to get all the input and there are like a few few questions that perhaps we can try to um answer them well quickly but still so yeah. that uh, that they are needed so uh, one question um, that came up in the beginning also when you mentioned that you have a lot of people commuting to Oradea. Um, did you, and if you did, how did you uh, include or work together with other municipalities around? Yeah, uh, it was not a very easy task, but fortunately, as we had uh, the functional urban area represent, which is organized around the Orada metropolitan area. So we managed to, to have a common development strategy. So it was easier to approach the organizing of, uh, of the, 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 the transportation and the connectivity between the city and the surroundings. Uh, in terms of um, public transport, because this is the most, uh, let's say, successful story at our level, it was not uh, very easy. We have, uh, we have succeeded uh, to expand the public transport service uh, only, to, only to two municipalities. So it is, a, it is an ongoing process, it's not uh, easy, but uh, due to our experience uh, of working at the um, grassroots level with the local authorities, so we manage, uh, let's say, to better integrate them in a planning, joint planning process. Mm -hmm. But it's not easy, it's a, it's a day by day uh, discussion, uh, also trainings, uh, capacity building for the, for the local uh, authorities. Yeah in order yeah. to understand the importance. Yeah, yeah, but it's still, I mean, I think even if it's not easy, it's always good to have it in mind and to, to work for it. So that still sounds sounds uh, sounds like you're on a good way. Um, yeah. And, uh, it yeah. is also a question of uh, better explain them the difference between uh, the two public transport organizing. For example, we have a Metropolitan Transport Authority, uh, but uh, we have also a transport organizer at the level of uh, the county. We are talking about two different uh, systems of organizing and financing the public transport system. For example, in our case, uh, the local authorities are totally responsible with the organizing and the financing. While in the case of the county transport organizer, it is a commercial based public transport service mm -hmm. where the local authorities are not at all involved. So if, uh -huh. even in the, in the development of the timetables, they are only cons consulted but they cannot intervene in terms of uh, influencing the timetables because they are not organizers. They are, they are outside of the <laughs> decision-making process. This is why uh, for us it was very important to uh, give them the, the appropriate tools in order to be able to intervene in the timetables, in the development of the new public transport routes, so to be totally responsible uh, for organizing the public transport. And uh, we can say that uh, this, uh, um, the, the expansion of the public transport system in the most two important municipalities outside the city of Oradea was a successful story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, now there came some questions still also up from the audience. Um, I would like to take those those at least um, still in the last few minutes. So the, the question, one question is about how to present the need of intervention on urban infrastructure that aims to improve it for private transportation mode as a measure within an SUMP. 
let's say through saying it it is to reduce the time people spend on traffic and it implies reduction in emissions of co2 once we avoid traffic jams well let's try to rephrase this <laughs> so um yeah like how, how did you um um succeed to present the need of these interventions on the on the really on the urban infrastructure um and i think it also goes a little bit in this direction like yeah like how did you apart from that sump is now um is like uh, compulsory in romania but like how how did you get the the politician and decision maker to to understand this need Yes, it was a, a very difficult uh, task for us as, let's say, uh, planners or practitioners in, in, uh, in the development of uh, SUMPs. Uh, fortunately, it is mandatory because uh, it, uh, it uh, obliged the local decision makers, uh, let's say, to, to, to deal with, the, with uh, the, the approaching of the overall transportation modes and yeah. to, to try to connect it to the general urban planning. It was yeah. uh, uh, very, very, very important. But uh, even today, we cannot say, for example, in terms of monitoring that uh, we have ensured the, the, the necessary capacity in order to, let's say, to, to control totally the monitoring process. Unfortunately, it was a mandatory step. And then, OK, we obtained the project. but. Mm -hmm. Now we should maybe we should better focus on, on, on building the institutional capacity for monitoring and for the next planning phase. So yeah. uh, in one or two years, because um, of course we are dependent on the EU financing from the national level, uh, except the content and the, the, the let's say the, the requirements, uh, we did not have any support in terms of financing uh, uh, urban mobility measures. So this right. is why uh, it is, uh, it is um, up to the local authorities to, to, to develop uh, this uh, dynamic, in fact. Yeah. But it's yeah. not it's not easy. So uh, as uh, the cities or the decision political decision makers obtain the the the, the financing and the project investment projects are uh, are uh, set up, uh, we have to follow up and we have to continue our uh, our approach. This is why I put uh, I, I made a parallel between the projects that were financed in the frame of the regional operational program and the projects that were not at all what fi were financed through the own public budget for example where you uh, in the frame of eu funds uh, uh, projects you had a lot of uh, were integrated were focused uh, on, on sustainable urban transfer modes because it was a requirement but in case of own local uh, uh, public uh, investment projects. Uh, maybe you saw that we had uh, parking places uh, in the city center, so more the supply side measures, uh, which uh, let's say uh, did not create a balanced approach. In fact, so we have two kind of approaches: <laughs> one which is uh, stimulated by the EU SUMP guidelines, national, and also the financing, which are let's say. Yeah very clear, focusing on the overall transportation modes, planning, trying to, to integrate uh, and have a local based approach, of course. But you have the other, other kind of projects uh, which are promoted uh, through the own budget. And in this respect, at the level of this kind of measures, we do not have such much control. And yeah. Yeah. it yeah. can like unbalance the transition toward an SUMP approach at the level of a city. Yeah, because and, and we do not apply the same measures. Yeah, yeah, and what you said, I think it, it's in in those countries where the SUMP has been made mandatory. It's now also it will show then after a few years, like about the implementation, like if it has been anchored actually, and if it has been institutionalized and understood in a way that it goes beyond that it's only mandatory. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks. Um, there's one, I will take this one last question from the audience still. I'm now not sure if you can actually answer it, but I'll read it. Um, it's, um, there was a question about uh, the World Bank has developed a survey for Romanian cities called the priorities of your city. This will end next week. How was the response for Oradea and what are the priorities that inhabitants of Oradea are choosing? I'm not sure if you are aware yes, of that. Uh, yes, yeah? yes. Okay. Uh, it was um, 
an activity that uh, was developed uh, by the World Bank and also uh, the Federation of uh, Metropolitan Areas from uh, Romania and urban agglomerations regarding the prioritizing of uh, various uh, measures um, at the level of the most important urban areas from Romania. Um, in Oradea was the uh, fifth city in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, respondents, so uh, at the level of uh, Romania. Of course, um, it were, were the most important projects were related to the major uh, infrastructure, uh, such as the motorway, for example, the connection to the motorway, um, crossing the, the border, um, we had also the electrification of uh, the um, uh, railway line between Orada and Cluj Napoca in order to create a railway uh, network, speed network, the best in Cluj Napoca, and so on. So, uh, major uh, investment projects, but uh, that are, of course, very, very important and that can change, um, let's say, and accelerate uh, the development but uh, which are uh, less under the influence of the local authority because we are talking about very important budgets while mm. in, our, in the case of SUMP we are talking more about uh, let's say um, the about a concept and also the translation into practice uh, on a daily basis of the overall transportation modes under the that can be totally or the partly, major part, influenced by the local authorities. Uh, while in the case of the World Bank projects, we are talking uh, more uh, about, uh, let's say, uh, national uh, intervention yeah. projects. Bigger scale, yeah. Okay, thanks. I hope um, that this question was uh, answered enough for Luana. <laughs> um, okay, but I think um, now we already are a few minutes over and I would like to not extend it too much. I hope, uh, Cyprian, that we can share your contact details also with the, I think they're also in the presentation. So in case there is something urgent to ask, I hope it's okay if you can yeah. contact me. Yeah, I'm available. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share with you our, our uh, experience. And uh, yes, so much. in case there will be other uh, further questions, I am available to, to answer any time. Great, thanks. Thank you. Okay, and now we'll come just to a wrap up of this webinar. Um, just summing up uh, a few the next activities that are coming. Um, as Maya already mentioned in her presentation, I just want to repeat it one more time. Um, there are already those three e-courses available at the Mobility Academy. So you can see the link here, mobility-academy.eu, and there are more e-courses coming up during spring. The webinar recordings from the previous webinars and also from this webinar will be available at the Sums Up website. Very soon you will also receive uh, an email still with the materials and the recordings and a very short evaluation survey now after the webinar. And the next webinar will take place in May. We will communicate the date um, as soon as we have settled it with the speakers. and. Please check your uh, or check the website and check um, the social media that we use to to stay updated and we'll make a promotion uh, in time of course so um, I really hope that you enjoyed the, this today's webinar and that you can take something um, with you from from the um, from what you have heard and we really hope to hear you or to have you again in the next webinar Thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye bye. Okay, thank you too. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye.